Hey guys, Derek here. We're gonna check out the news again for uh, the week February 22nd to whatever today is, 29th, 28th, 28th. <laughs> anyway, we'll get into it. So Sony had a state of play um, video presentation this week where they showed off some new games and new things potentially coming on to PlayStation this year, or at least this half of this year. So the first thing they went off with was some new crash footage so this is crash 4 it's about time but these are like the the playstation 5 um updates and such so they've got like 3d audio uh 4k to 60 fps you know reactive triggers on the ps5 that kind of thing um if you already have it it's free upgrade so that's nice and if you don't well give it a shot I guess I personally haven't played the new crash so no idea if it's actually any good but uh, yeah the free upgrade is nice so they've got that going for them uh, also showing up was Returnal which is this latest thing from uh, Housemark which is a kind of Housemark would have been typically known for like really fast paced um, arcade shooters so this is like their first third person deal um return of just showing off some of its special effects which is what house mark is very much known for they're very good with their particle effects so this if nothing else returnal will be a very pretty game even though these monsters look disgusting <laughs> really well designed though there's a lot going on with those guys wow um yeah and returnal has a bit of a roguelike thing going on where in that you die uh, constantly and come back and the world changes and stuff like that it's got some other uh, story beats that are mixed in um, the main characters like family home shows up on this alien planet for some reason you're like uh, that shouldn't be there <laughs> so uh, yeah it could be interesting I'm looking forward to it anyway uh, this game, Sifu, which comes from the same developers from Absolver, which looks like a really nice just kung fu action game, um, which potentially has some kind of roguelike mechanic, I don't know. Or not roguelike, that's not correct, but like a death mechanic, because you'll see here, the character dies. Presumably, I don't know, comes back aged. Uh, this is like a recurring theme, a theme mechanic for the game in that uh, he gets progressively older as the game goes on it's not clear if it's because he dies and that's how it happens or it's just natural part of the story I would suspect it's because he dies just because of that red looking thing <laughs> that, that red scene there with all the ghosts or whatever it was but it looks interesting it's from the guys who did Absolver which was a kind of weird MMO martial arts kind of thing uh, which I never got into because of the word because of the three letters MMO um, but if it had been a single player game I probably would have been all about it uh, this is Solar Ash which is from the latest thing from the guys from Heart Machine Heart Machine did um, Hyperlight Drifter which was a really good um, top-down pixel game very fast-paced action game really great um, this gives me a lot of the pathless vibes um, they look very similar I think the only way that they're dissimilar is that solar ash appears to have uh, combat <laughs> whereas the pathless gave me had boss fights but that was about it there was no other combat things um, I really liked hyper light drifter so I'm looking forward to solar ash even though it doesn't appear to be as action focused as hyper light drifter it's a bit more exp exploratory but there is combat can we get to a combat section kind of anyway their emphasis on combat as you can see is quite quick and it's mostly in service of keeping your character moving which is kind of what they were going for it's got a bit of it's got a bit of shadow of the colossus going on in that you have really large enemies like that thing that you end up fighting uh, and you know it, it's more of a like a platforming thing than an actual fight in the same vein of Shadow of the Colossus so that should be interesting hopefully anyway I don't know it looks fun and it's colorful so that's always nice uh, Five Nights at Freddy Security Breach uh, I don't like jump scares so I've pretty much never <laughs> played Five Nights at Freddy's um, this seems to be more of a stealth 
survival game in that you're not locked into the security room like you are normally in Five Nights at Freddy's. Never play, or never even looked at any of their expansions, so I have no idea if that ever changed. But this is more of um, actually exploring Freddy's. Zzz. They don't even show it here. There was actual gameplay in the in the presentation. So this is more of a teaser. Um, so go look, for, go look for the presentation, I suppose, if you're interested in it. But yeah, there's some actual parts of the of the main character, like crawling around in the in the, the Freddy's area. Um, it's definitely got the the Chuck E. Cheese, I suppose, for the U.S. guys. But like Adventureland, it would have been called here, um, like padded areas and uh, ball pits and that kind of thing. Looks fun, even though you're uh, being haunted by murderous uh, robots or something. Uh, Kenna Bridge of Spirits continues to look gorgeous. Um, it's basically a Pixar game. Might, or might as well be. Uh, is there a combat section? Or not a combat section, but a gameplay section somewhere. Or is this just... I think this is just a cinematic trailer. Um, but yeah, it looks really, really nice. And I'm looking forward to play it. Uh, Deathloop continues to be a will I, won't I get this game. Because on the one hand arcane and like dishonored and prey and all that stuff while i had some mixed feelings about prey i always really liked dishonored but i don't like the yeah you die and everything resets thing <laughs> like why why do you do this to me why does every game have to have a you die and everything resets thing going on it looks really good uh, it looks really slick um i just don't know if i can put up with the because it's like the game's premise is that you need to kill a bunch of people all in one loop, if you like. And if you die, everything goes back to the start. It's like Groundhog Day kind of thing. Um, I guess you'll get to a point where you're like, okay, I know how to kill this guy. I can kill him in like two minutes. Bam. Um, but then the, the the wrench or the in the in the works is um, this other assassin who can kind of show up and just kick your ass whenever. Uh, she's got a bit of an Agent Smith thing going on, and I think she can inhabit other, like, jobber NPCs and just become them for a bit. I don't know. That's what it appeared to suggest in the trailer. I don't know if that's actually the case. Yeah, that's where it just happened right there. Uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. I don't know. Probably. I mean, I probably will get it. Uh, probably the bigger news or the bigger reveal, I suppose, for State of Play was the introduction of Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade, which is a, um, what do you call it? Intermission upgrade, I suppose. But basically, it's um, the upgrade for PS5. You know, it's improved graphics, it's got improved load times, uh, improved textures, and things like that. Um, there is also an additional story mission which introduces, let's see if it's in this trailer. I don't think it is. It's just, oh yeah, photo mode. They added photo mode too, which I will absolutely use. Oh, there it is. New episode featuring Yuffie, um, who should not be in Midgar. <laughs> so what's going on with the story now? OG Final Fantasy VII, she didn't show up until you were well out of Midgar. So yeah that should be interesting she doesn't appear to actually um cross paths with the, the other characters in final Fantasy 7 so it's still somewhat keeping within the story she has her own sort of side mission taking place in midgar which i guess is a way for them to show off hey yuffie will probably be in part two and here's how she plays so uh, that's probably a way for them to get around it so some announcements during the week. Um, Monster Hunter Rise coming to PC next year. So this is a kind of news from Capcom who are more or less confirming something that came out from their ransomware attack last year, which was that the next Monster Hunter will be on PC as well. Um, not exactly surprising. Uh, Monster Hunter World did really, really well on PC. I think that's where its biggest player base is actually. I'm not sure. But uh, it's unsurprising that Capcom have said, yeah, let's just put the next one on PC too. Why not make more money? Monster Hunter Rise is currently exclusive to Switch. So um, if they want to be making the same kind of money they made with World, they'll absolutely have to open it up to other platforms. It might end up, I mean, if they can get it to run on PC, it doesn't, it's not absolutely outside the realm that they could eventually get it to run on PlayStation or Xbox since they are pretty much just PCs at this stage. 
Um, more first party stuff. Did I not have a thing? Sorry, I think I've skipped or I've moved these around in a way that I didn't want to. Anyway, this was the story I actually wanted to talk about, but we'll go back. We'll go back to this. Um, yeah, so there are more first party games coming to PC from PlayStation. So Days Gone will be will be the next ones coming out. But um, this is coming from an interview that Jim Ryan did with GQ, which I'll put the link in uh, in the description. But he basically goes into uh, the VR stuff, which was actually what I wanted to talk about because <laughs> it was on the PlayStation blog recently. Again, coming from uh, this interview and also from PlayStation's own official blog, but there'll be a new VR um, hardware for PS5 probably next year. Um, some interesting tidbits coming out of it is that it'll have single cable. So if you're familiar with PSVR that works on PS4 at the moment, you'll know that it is a pain in the hole to set up. And you have to think, do I actually want to play VR? Like you might go, yeah, I'd really love to play Beat Saber right now. And then you go, to set up all that fucking shit. <laughs> so it having it being a single cable thing will be will be very nice. Um, so hopefully that uh, continues to be the sense. They don't have to backtrack on that. PS4, PSVR had its own like processing unit. It had a bunch of cables that you needed to connect up to the camera, to the front of this processing unit, to the PS4 console itself. It was just a nightmare. It's just cables, cables everywhere. Uh, long cables, so you don't exactly get. Um, caught up in them or anything. It's just, a, it's just a pain in the hole to set up if you don't already have it set up. Um, and there was also an issue in that you couldn't do proper game capture. Yes, yeah, sorry, you couldn't do um, HDR and 4K with the the processing unit connected. So I tended to always have it disconnected so I could do game capture stuff, which was more of a priority me than playing VR. So I'm looking forward to that. Some other things they've added is that it will have its own controllers. So the PS Move controller is gone, which suggests to me, it suggests to me that they're not gonna be using camera tracking to do it, as in using the PlayStation Eye to do it. Because if they have their own um, controllers, well, I mean, they had their own controllers with the PS Move, but the PS Move relied on the big glowing ball that was on top of the PS Move. The camera would track that. Or if you were using the DualShock 4, it would, it would track the, the triangular sort of camera or the triangular light on the back of the PS4, on the back of the DualShock 4, um, which the DualSense does not have. It doesn't have a back light. It only has the two lights in the front, which like there's no way a camera will be able to track them. So possibly it will be using um, maybe eye tracking inside the headset itself, which is what the Oculus does. I find it unlikely they will use um, what does HTC do? They have like sensors that you set up in your in your area and they can track those. Um, find it unlikely they'll do that because it's too much hardware. So hopefully, hopefully they'll basically piggyback on what Oculus is doing. And by the time it actually comes out, it might be cheaper. Um, elsewhere in that story, Jim Ryan was talking about, again, uh, PC stuff, uh, PC games coming. Oh, sorry. PlayStation exclusive games coming to PC with Days Gone and some others along the way, although they did not specify, but they did say that Horizon did well and that Stranding did well. So they're like, yeah, sure, why not? Um, some other stuff came out of that interview that we will go into in the industry bullshit section because he said some shit um, that I don't agree with. And I also think he's lying, but anyway. So some game updates. Uh, Electronic Arts removes multiplayer mode from Dragon Age game in big pivot. This is coming from Bloomberg, Jason Schreier, who used to be at Kotaku and was not behind a paywall. For some reason, they let me into this one, but most of Bloomberg's articles I'm not allowed into. Anyway, so this is news from uh, EA, basically, who have all have always been about, no, put multiplayer in every game, even Dead Space for some reason. Put multiplayer in that. It, it did so well in Dead Space 2, we have to ring it back for Dead Space 3. Definitely put multiplayer in Mass Effect, which was like a celebrated single player game. Definitely need to put it in there. I'm glad it's gone. I'm glad it's gone. It does mean that <laughs> development has probably been pushed back even further on Dragon Age, but there you go. Um, this is also coming from, and it's kind of thrown in here at the end um, in the article, but that the um, the work on Anthem Next, as it was going to be called, which is like the apology patch in the same way that Final Fantasy XIV got an apology patch and is now 
amazing, apparently. Never played it. Um, anyway, uh, that's not happening anymore. It's been cancelled. So whatever version of Anthem is out there right now is probably the last version. I, I don't think they're going to be uh, supporting it anymore. EA have made this decision to take multiplayer out of Dragon Age. Uh, it goes along with Anthem not doing great and Star Wars Fallen Order doing really well. How about that? Single player games are great and maybe let Bioware go back to doing what they were well known for and what you bought them for, you fucking idiots. Uh, right, uh, so this is kind of a two way update i suppose the cyberpunk patch that was allegedly supposed to come out around now that would improve like load times and freezing and bugs and shit uh push back to later in march um but then also thrown in the story is that probably the reason for it is that uh, developers were locked out of their workstation because of the recent um ransomware and cyber attacks so um like they were going to be working from home, so the VPN was probably down, which is their virtual private network was probably down, so they wouldn't be able to log in, they wouldn't be able to do any work because of the whole ransomware thing. I imagine everything was shut down for security to find the holes and such. Um, also thrown into it was that, hey, maybe your personal data was leaked too, so sorry, can you still do six day work weeks for us though? Fuck you, Cyber fucking CG Project, Jesus Christ. You've absolutely torpedoed your, your reputation at this stage. Terrible. Um, System Shock remake launches this summer, maybe. So we were talking about the kind of the VR uh, thing that they put out last week. So this is just a confirmation that the actual core game will be out in summer. And there's a PC demo, um, which uh, will be on the channel at some stage. <laughs> so look forward to that, I guess. Um, I still have to figure out if that's just a night dive thing. Okay, that's what the game looks like. Um, so this is like a kind of remake of the original System Shock. There's a demo out on Steam at the moment, and I think on some other stores, but Steam at least, which is what I'll be doing it with. Um, this machine that I'm currently recording on is not set up for PC recording, or at least I haven't had to do it since I bought it. So. You may or may not see this demo, uh, as I'm planning on playing it right after this, and if I can record it, I will. Uh, so you might see it on the channel, you might not. Either way, it's free if you have a PC and Steam, which I imagine you do. You know, just check it out yourselves, I suppose. Pause. Uh, Gran Turismo 7 gets pushed back to 2022. Again, that came out of the, the GQ interview, which is not the thing I want to talk about, but it was part of that GQ interview. Um, I'm shocked Gran Turismo got delayed, imagine. It's not like the game that constantly gets delayed or anything. Gran Turismo must get delayed several hundred times. Uh, like, it must get delayed all the time. Like, every iteration. Has any iteration of Gran Turismo ever not been delayed? I don't think so. <laughs> like, I would have to go and check if that's the case, but I'm pretty sure it's always been delayed. Um... Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 delayed past 2021. Developers removed from project, pre orders halted. Okay, so big fucking. Um, some, some shit. Some shit happening with Paradox and Heartsuit Lab. So, Paradox are the publishers for Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. God, that's a title. That's a title, alright. Anyway, uh, we have now chosen to postpone, blah, 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 blah. Um, developers are shit. <laughs> We wanted to move it off. It doesn't actually go into why they've decided to take development away from Heartsuit Labs and give it to somebody else. The somebody else has not been um, mentioned. They don't say who it is, but they are. They will be taking over development rather than restarting development. Yeah, it's not gonna go well. Like Bloodlines 2 has had a lot of issues already, even beyond the, this particular one. It's been delayed a couple of times. They've lost. They've lost writers, creative directors a number of times. Not a good look. Um, having a new studio partner take over, also not great. Um, <laughs> I thought this part was funny, though, in that like Paradox also go on to say, we would like to honor the hard work of Heartsuit Labs. They did great work for their hard work on the project, but not good enough because we're taking it away from you. <laughs> it's like... 
What a slap in the face. Yeah, thanks for all your hard work. Yeah, fuck off. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Uh, some new releases this week. So, Curse of the Dead Gods is a roguelike again, because everyone wants to do roguelikes now, apparently. Um, it looks like a kind of nice Diablo thing. There's a lot of different camera changes. Um, how many of these are cutscenes and how the game plays itself, I don't know. I'm kind of burnt out on these isometric roguelikes, particularly after Hades, because Hades just did it so well. I find it unlikely any other game will. So until I hear otherwise, um, I don't know. I was thinking of getting this, but I just thought, is it going to be better than Hades? Probably not. Is it going to be better than Diablo? No, because it's a roguelike, so who knows? I don't know. Not to not to be shitty to the developers of Curse of the Dead Gods, but I mean, I got a good score, so I don't know. But after Hades, I'm a bit burnt out. Maybe, maybe later. Persona 5 Strikers. Uh, Persona 5 Strikers is a Muso title, so this will be similar to something like um, Age of Calamity, which we looked at on the channel a while ago, in that it, it takes the Muso games and, you know, puts the trappings of Persona around them. So this is a follow-up to the Persona 5 game itself. Um, I think they've come back from college or something, or it's the next summer or something like that. But you can see it's obviously very different to the Persona game itself. It's not a turn-based RPG, for instance. It's a heavy action 1v1000 kind of game. But with all the characters and all that fun stuff, and it's you know, like additional to the game itself, so nice. I haven't had a chance to play it yet, but it is on my console, and it will show up in my game of Games of February at some stage. Uh, Bravely Default 2 uh, is, a, is a nice kind of chibi RPG. Let me skip ahead to gameplay. 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 <laughs> Will you fucking go to where I want you to go? Whatever, fine, we're stuck with that. Anyway, uh, Bravely Default 1 was apparently really, really good. So I never got to play it because it was a DS title, and as I've said before, I went more or less straight from SNES to Switch. So I've never, I've never really played anything in between. But I like these old school RPGs. So yeah, I'll be I'll be checking out Bravely Default 2. Looking forward to it. There's some gameplay finally as I get to stop talking about it. Anyway, okay, now for everyone's favorite section, yours and mine. Industry bullshit. Okay, so. Here's the thing I want to talk about in the GQ article in that Jim Ryan was basically saying, yeah, Sony's Japan Studios is going, it's going away, but we're definitely committed to Japanese development. Fuck you, Jim. No, you're not. Anyway, so Sony Japan Studios, you may know from all of these games and more. So there's the Ico, Ico, whatever way you want to put it, Shadow of the Colossus guys, The Last Guardian guys, they're gone. Ape Escape guys, they're gone. Gravity Rush guys, they're gone. Uh, Loco Roco guys, they're gone. Padapon guys, they're gone. Knack, no, not Knack. Yeah, he's gone too. Basically, the only thing they're going to hang on to are the Astrobot guys, which is Team Asopi. So they will um, take any developer, or not any developer, some developers rather, uh, and merge them into the team, but the vast majority of their development team is gone. It's like it's gone already. Um, they just didn't renew their contracts, which were going to come up at the end of, not the end of April, start of April, it's the beginning of the tax year. So they decided not to, it goes into it here that basically Astro's Playroom is really good, so we're gonna put all of our stuff into that and fuck all the other IPs, I guess. Uh, it's not to say that the IPs themselves are gone. Obviously, they still own them, so they could be farmed out to um, external developers, which is what they did with the Demon's Soul remake. So, um, Sony Japan come up on the like developers' splash screen, if you like, but I think the vast majority of that was done by Bluepoint. And Sony Japan were there to kind of help out with like PS5-specific stuff. Um, there's other things that, like, this is kind of incoming. Like, people just, like, have kind of had rumors that this was happening mostly because um, the guy behind Silent Hill and Gravity Rush, Kiichiro Toyama, who we talked about last time, who was showing off some concept art and an uh, interview that was entirely in Japanese with no captions, so thanks for that. <laughs> but uh, he started his own game studio, Boker Game Studio, and a lot of the developers from Sony Japan have 
gone there now. It's various like uh, tweets and stuff have suggested that's happened. Uh, producer of Bloodborne and, Dem and the Demon Souls remake also left. Um, like there's a lot of people who've gone. And there's some more stuff here and it goes into like Jim Ryan saying we are definitely uh, you know Sony Japan or sorry the Japanese sort of um, region is still very important to us Japanese developed games are still you know something we take great pride in and no you fucking don't Jim uh, they're going into why we can't just make games for one that only do well in one location that's not fun so we'll make games that only do well in America I guess instead oh sorry I said that part out loud. I meant worldwide. Yeah, games that are popular worldwide, not just America. Sigh. Anyway, time to shit on Google Stadia again. So Google Stadia subject to a class action lawsuit. So this is because um, various Google games from Google Stadia and Stadia itself have suggested that the games can run in 4K, uh, except they can't. They run in upscaled 2K is not the same thing so this is what this lawsuit alleges that all their advertising suggested it runs in 4k nope no it don't so that's it that's all, that's all the suit says uh, uh remuneration for people who bought it on the on the um promises that it would run 4k except it doesn't it runs upscale 2k which is to be honest what most consoles do as well continuing to shit, to shit on stadia um, new report details Stadia's demise. Demi I mean, it's a bit early. Demise, exactly. It's on the way, sure. It's not quite dead just yet. Um, but this goes into some of the, the background stuff that um, many of the hardware developers and uh, software developers uh, behind Stadia suggested to higher-ups that we're not going to be able to deliver all the stuff we say. Um, right out the gate so maybe maybe make this like a beta launch you know that we can ramp it up and then have the big 1.0 thing when, when we've managed to get all the stuff working and phil harrison famed killer of consoles <laughs> decided no let's put out all the bells and whistles and have our big event and then have people complain later that none of that shit that you um showcased works none of it um, so they're getting into that. There's another thing in that they wanted to have a big splash, so they bought, um, basically threw, threw a bunch of money at um, Rockstar to get Red Dead 2. Uh, a couple of other um, games, same. Just here's, here's, here's a shit ton of money. Um, bring your game to Stadia. Rather than spend some time developing your own games with that same money that you claimed that he claimed like last time when they laid when they closed off all the studios that it was too expensive maybe if you didn't throw all that money at fucking red dead redemption 2 which is fucking plotting your shit uh you wouldn't have had that issue um later on this this wired article just goes back to reiterate that uh phil harrison was just saying we're all doing a great job and then five days later you know shit canned everybody thanks uh, and then the one, there's a small little tidbit here in that um, uh, Hideo Kojima and Yu Suzuki, um, Silent Hill guys, uh, well, sorry, Yu Suzuki is, Kojima is not Yu Suzuki, or is he, he might be Team Silent. Shit, I don't know. Anyway, horror, <laughs> regardless, um, uh, they pitched that, hey, we could do an exclusive episodic horror game for Stadia. And they said no. It's like free money. Anyway, we haven't stopped. <laughs> we haven't stopped shitting on Stadia, guys. There's a lot of Stadia shit we can talk about this week. I don't know. I don't know why I keep doing this. So this is a story here from earlier in the week that was later updated. But uh, Stadia developers can't fix the bugs in their own game because they fired the developers. Good job, dumbasses. So this came from a, a, a player who was trying to play Journey of the Savage Planet. Journey to the Savage Planet? Journey of the Savage Planet? Journey to the Savage Planet. There it is there. Um, basically saying, hey, I can't play the game on Stadia because it keeps crashing. So he went to Stadia support to say, hey, uh, game keeps crashing. So can you fix this for me? Cheers. Mm -hmm. And they sent him to 505 Games, and they said, 505 Games are the publisher of Stadia, or for or the publisher of Journey to Savage Planet, so you should check with them as to why, you know, if they're going to fix it. <laughs> 505 Games came back to say, lol, 
Uh, Google own Journey to the Savage Planet because they bought the developers. So yeah, it's it's their shit. Um, maybe you should remind them that they own the fucking rights to it and they're doing the publishing on Stadia. So that should be good. Anyway, <laughs> it goes on later to say that. Uh, I guess they remembered that they uh, fired the developers. And like, hmm, this will be a dilly of a pickle. But apparently it was patched, so I don't know. Did they actually pay the developers a little bit to come in on their, after they fired them to f fix the game that they didn't give them time to fix because you fired them the day it was released? Dickheads. <laughs> I didn't realize there were so many Stadia stories. Okay, I think this is the last shitting on, on, on Stadia story. So this is more going back to, and it's not really a shitting on Stadia story, I suppose it's more of a PR exercise, but last uh, last week we were talking about, oh no, was it the week before? It was the week before. We were talking about uh, that the Terraria dev had a big a public, like, just throwing shit at uh, Google for how they were handling his account and how they were handling uh, Terraria. Um, he had basically been blocked from like a ton of Google services for no reason, or for no reason he he could find. Uh, but it's later been updated to say, oh, we've managed to come to a thing. Uh, as you may have noticed, yada, yada, yada thing. But after a month of pushing and event support, Google finally got off their hole and did something. Um, it was never stated what exactly the reason for it was. I don't know, somebody decided to actually check the reports for a change and just pressed the big button that said undo. I imagine, um, what's his name? Andrew Spinks. I imagine Andrew, Mr. Spinks, is still probably pretty pissed off with Google, but because it's not just him, you know, he, he's like a bunch of other people working on the game, plus I don't think he owns the publishing rights anymore. So, yeah, I don't think he really gets to say on whether or not it goes back on Stadia, but it's going back on Stadia. Um, yeah, anyway, PR stuff. Either way, still shitty for Google. They could have they could have fixed this. They, it took a big public stink to get them to do anything. And it's not just Google who are like this, like all big tech companies who automate all of their customer service are all to blame for this kind of thing. It's just, it's just shitty. Why do I do this to myself? Fucking industry bullshit. Anyway, Hogwarts Legacy lead designer used to run anti-social justice YouTube channel. I'm shocked. It's almost as if anything touch, that touches fucking Harry Potter is just disgusting. But yeah, it's pointing out uh, that this guy, uh, <coughs> who is lead designer for Harry Potter Legacy, or what's it called, Hogwarts Legacy, whatever, who cares. Anyway, he's got lengthy defenses uh, from your man, who was, because of sexual misconduct, Atari co-founder, foster toxic work environment, so basically, look, the, <laughs> the injustice of social justice, our thought crimes becoming real, cultural appropriation is okay, etc., do you want him attached? You're probably bad enough that you've got your one stuck to it, who apparently has no say in, in how Hogwarts Legacy is developed, but I bet she's getting royalties from it. Anyway, in other news, uh, Harry Potter can fuck off, I suppose. So, going back to uh, the whole Epic versus Apple shit, and Apple wanted Valve to hand over a ton of data. Like like their whole business basically um anyway the courts come back to say okay don't hand over like your whole business but like these specific 436 games out of the 30,000 apple we're looking for um basically the court has come back to say yeah they have some standing to ask for this so if you could do that that'd be great valve had said that this is considerably onerous because we are like a couple of hundred people versus Apple's a couple of hundred thousand people, you know, this is kind of shitty. Plus, um, we make PC games or host PC games, not apps, fuck off. But the court has gone back to say, look, <laughs> he's like, look, it's my understanding that Apple have basically sent this out to fucking everybody. It's not just you. 
they have some standing to do this. Uh, you have to march to figure out, mid-march, to figure out what you're going to do. You can appeal it, I suppose. Chances are they'll get their pound of flesh regardless. This is to, to basically to show how uh, microtransactions and that kind of thing are handled on other platforms. So it's not just Valve who are, who are being asked for this. I imagine it does say that the Samsung store somewhere is being asked to do this. I imagine Google have been asked to, to look into us potentially sony for the psn etc it would be a mistake for apple to go after those guys though because it's a different or it just highlights that they're uh, a walled garden it highlights it even more <laughs> to be honest more epic stuff epic settle loot, loot box lawsuit by paying nothing it's not virtual money is nothing to them it's a couple of numbers on a spreadsheet but anyway so this was a, le a class action lawsuit that came up um, last year at some stage where um, Fortnite and Rocket League were selling this kind of random, but I mean, like I know a lot of the shit is random anyway. This one was particularly random in that you could get almost anything out of this loot box. And because they're not forced to show the percentage drops for things, they're only forced to do that in Germany or is it Belgium it's I mean it's almost certainly Germany but I think it's Belgium as well anyway not in the US they're not you don't get the 0.0000001% chance of the thing you actually want and a 99% chance of some trash you already have anyway um, they've decided to settle it by doing nothing and just pressing some buttons they give you some virtual books thanks I guess um, the lawsuit only is only meant to cover US, but it will cover pretty much anywhere where those games are made. Or, sorry, where those games are sold. Um, US players can uh, go after some, they pursue additional benefits. Um, so some millions have been set aside in case, you know, they're not satisfied with their nothing. Uh, like, it's, it's worth this much money. It's worth this much money. Funny how these numbers are the same, right? But these numbers are not the same, despite there being an exchange rate. But whatever. Routinely getting fucked over. Not that Canada doesn't. Canada gets so, Canada gets so fucking burned. Anyway, oh, Brazil. Brazil. Holy shit, Brazil gets fucking burned. Anyway, the point is, uh, this costs Epic nothing. Like, this isn't settling exactly. This is PR. Like, this is go away. Here's some virtual books and don't have uh, the courts look any further into the... Uh, in balance of loot boxes, please. Okay, shit on Amazon instead now. So Twitch removes Amazon's anti-union ads after furious steamer. Steamer? Steaming streamer response, I suppose. Goodness. Anyway, Amazon on Twitch. I can't remember when they bought them. Ages ago. Anyway, um, and their ad platforms are merged. So as you see on Amazon, you'll probably see on Twitch thing is Twitch are supposed to have some amount of autonomy um, on what ads get run it's supposed to be non-political and something something but anyway union busting union busting is political so those ads should not have been on Twitch uh, streamers were really really pissed off about it there's a bunch of quotes from a bunch of different streamers I have no idea who any of them are because I'm old but um, there's a point made out here. Um, this absolutely sets a tone that Amazon and Twitch wouldn't support the unionization of streamers, so not great. But the whole ordeal was that streamers don't get a choice on what ads are shown on their streams. So a bunch of anti-union shit that they mightn't agree with. Um, any other kind of political shit they mightn't agree with. Any of those fucking products, they're like, no, I bought this product and it was total shit. I don't want it to be advertised on my stream. Um, they have no say in that. This is just a, a glaringly obvious example that you know you have no real rights, even if you're a streamer, or cons uh, consumer, or whatever. Uh, okay, shitty developer time. Dying Light Two Dev Techland accused of creating a toxic work environment with leadership to blame. Uh, so these are a couple of stories. This one's from uh, PlayStation Trophies, and I kept this one out because it has a really funny quote at the end. Uh, this one from uh, Video Games 24-7, it's the same kind of story, but it just basically highlights the same kind of shit that you see in so many of these um, privately owned developers, is that it's almost 
always some kind of family business. So you've got the CEO um, and head of HR are married. So bringing up any issues you have with the CEO to HR is obviously not going to go anywhere. Um, they've got a bunch of things here where um, anytime you would bring up uh, like this new game mechanic or this way of doing something in the game, if it isn't already in some other game, it just will be thrown out. Um, they don't want to look at higher management, don't want to look at new stuff. They want to look at iterations of what already exists. Which just says, why Why am I in a creative position if I'm just copying shit? Um, you have the other issue that if he doesn't recognize the game it's from, it will also be thrown out. So if it's a game he's never heard of, you know, you also won't get that mechanic in the game. And then you have other issues in that they bring in people... Um, they bring in people who are meant to like shake things up and get us back on track, etc. Other buzzwords, like really well-known people who they have like high hopes for like turning around pipelines and stuff, uh, but then ignore them. You know, like upper management is um, like a, a brick wall trying to talk to them. Um, some other complaints about development, which I I'm like, yeah, if I've come across this shit, all right, yeah, just things like. Um, we want to see, uh, or we don't want to add something brand new, we want to add something that's already been proven to work. Um, we want to see their version of it and we'll just copy it. You've got things like uh, the development pipeline just changing constantly to the point that it, there is no pipeline. <laughs> this, is, this is just how it's done. Um, and then just this, this quote, so this was about um, bringing in um, they're bringing in like veterans who, who know what they're doing, who have provably shipped games, you know, they're like, you should listen to them. So it's Techland has a history of hiring people for which the team had high hopes, but it, end up, it ended up in nothing. Uh, one such case was for the designer, hang on, one such case, bleh, one such case for the designers was the hiring of Mark Albanet, former game director from Ubisoft. I was supposed to restructure how design is done in the studio, which we've already suggested means they just copy shit, but anyway. Even he, a veteran with 30 years of experience, couldn't break through upper management that is harder to change than the spin of the fucking earth. <laughs> it's just like, anonymous source, you are bitter as fuck and I love it. Um, this article from PlayStation Trophies also goes on to highlight um, like the other messes that have been coming from Dying Light 2 in particular. Um, Team Morale is at an all-time low, the story keeps changing. Um, how the game is actually going to be presented keeps changing. Their head writer was let go because of sexual harassment, like... Anyway, the game is indefinitely delayed at this point. I mean, chances are we're never ever going to see that game, but who knows. Okay, so the Sinking City is back on the news for industry bullshit. I uh, pointed out last week that it was back on the store. Um, so this is to highlight that it's also back on Steam, but Frogwares, the developer, not the publisher, have come out to say, uh, that's not our game. Um, so Frogwares has not created the version of The Sinking City that is today on sale on Steam. We do not recommend the purchase of this version more news soon. Um, continuing legal dispute between Frogwares and Nakon on what to do with The Sinking City. Frogwares are alleging that they're owed a bunch of royalties that were never paid, and they're also accusing Nakon uh, in advertising, pretending to be the developer of the game, when it was, of course, Frogwares who were the developer of the game. Um, it came up in um, French court that... Um, French court decided to uh, protect the French company, Nakon, instead of the Ukrainian company, Frogwares, I imagine. I'm shocked. Um, anyway, the kind of the kind of funny part about this is that the Steam page, uh, the kind of news about this game section of, of a Steam page for a game, pulls things from uh, Twitter and various other social sources. But Frogwares were able to get this as soon as the game went up. They were able to get this on like the top of the news to basically say we're the developers and we don't want you to buy <laughs> to buy this game. <laughs> it's like, nice. Uh, it's actually gone now. It's not on the Steam page anymore, but I don't know. That's, that's hilarious. Anyway, shitty stuff with the Sinking City for a game that's like, okay, not great. It's all right. Uh, okay, 
Activision warns a standard 500GB PS4 may no longer fit Call of Duty, Warzone, Black Ops, uh, Cold War, and Modern Warfare. Right, so here's the issue. So this has a couple of issues. Mostly to blame is Activision, because uh, the Call of Duty games have like zero optimization. They don't uh, compress anything. It's just they don't go to the effort of trying to optimize their game so that it can fit or so they can just shrink its its um, footprint on your hard drive. And the second issue here is the way PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 uh, update games. Uh, the way they do it is they download the update, however big it is, and they copy the entire game package. Right. Apply the update and then delete the old game package. So at some point you have double the size of the game plus the update on your hard drive and you need to have all of that space. If you have all three of those games, if you have Modern Warfare, uh, Blops and Warzone, whatever the fuck they are, I don't know, they all sound like the same game, whatever. If you have all three of them, you can't have all three of them basically on your hard drive at the same time and continue to get updates. So Activision are basically saying, uh, yeah, if you only ever play Call of Duty, I guess, you guys, you don't play any other games, right? Anyway, that's like the standard size for a PS4 hard drive is 500 gigs. The standard size for a PS5 hard drive is also 500 gigs. Um, and the bigger issue there is that you can't actually move PS5 games off the SSD to a hard drive, which you can do on PS4. So you do have some way of maintaining the games that you already have but you're kind of fucked on PS5 if you decide to have all three of these running at the same time. You basically can't have any other game on the platform. It's just shitty, particularly from uh, Activision and uh, the developers for the Call of Duty series. And just, just fucking optimize your game. Why does no other game have this issue? It's always the Call of Duty games. It's not like they're so high fidelity that this, that this should be the case. Okay, last thing, a bit a bit of funniness. Um, Destiny 2 players are jumping off cliffs to avoid playing Trials of Osiris. That's uh, some good game design you guys got there. Um, I just thought this was funny. So this article goes into a bunch of like headaches for, for Destiny that I don't understand because I stopped playing a long time ago. Um, anyway, the Trials of Osiris thing is like this really high level PvP thing where if you want to have the best gear, right? And this is kind of how it goes for MMOs, particularly if you're in PvP, because you obviously want to have the best gear so you can do the best out of it. Um, you need to win like seven games in a row or something to get the best gear, which is like, yeah, good fucking luck with that. Um, issues come up with that in that PvP, the way their matchmaking is done is that if you win one game, you seem to get thrown into games with people who just win games, who like, that's all they do. They never lose. Um, to the point that the chances of you getting that seven in a row are pretty much zero, unless you've already done it. Um, to the point that since you'll get rewards regardless of whether or not you win or lose, you might get the best, the best stuff. Um, but you'll get something out of it, so it is faster rather than hanging around and probably losing anyway or having your streak broken at the sixth game, fifth game, fourth game, or whatever. It's faster to just kill yourself right away. <laughs> so they have this article here from uh, Ethan Gak on Gash, Gak, Gach, I don't know, on uh, Kotaku, who's basically saying, any game I joined, um, I was met with people just beelining it to a cliff and jumping off and dying. Um, to the point that he's like, okay, I guess I'll join in and just keep dying, digging in further that this is why this is why they're doing it. The rewards are not worth the effort it takes to get them, which is a recurring theme for Destiny. But I just thought it's kind of funny that you have, look at this, this big like epic thing of like these guys facing off. It's gonna be a battle for the ages. And the first thing that happens is like, it's a race to see who can kill them the fastest. <laughs> it's just like, oof. That game design, you guys, that game design. Uh, anyway, uh, that was the news for February 22nd to 28th. Um, a lot of industry bullshit this week.
with some new updates, some state of play stuff. Um, state of play was kind of disappointing overall. I was hoping to see some more long-term projects that they would highlight, whereas they seem to be highlighting mostly stuff that's coming pretty soon, um, like within the first half of this year. I think Intergrade is probably the latest one, and that it'll be June at some point. Sifu, for uh, to be fair, there's no. I don't remember them announcing a release date, and if they did, I think it's next year. Uh, hopeful for PSVR, PSVR 2, or whatever they decide to call it, um, because setting up my PSVR right now would be onerous, to say the least, and Oculus, I don't want to, like I have an Oculus, but I just, I just don't want to fucking buy the same games again, because I know all I'll do is buy Beat Saber again, it's like, I have it, but I don't play it, but... <laughs> So, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I'll probably still have to rebuy it anyway when PSVR 2 comes out. Uh, elsewhere on the channel, you can see the latest vids uh, updated there. I played a bit of Fogs, I played a bit of Twin Mirror, uh, and I played a bit of Cyber Shadow, or I tried to play a bit of Cyber Shadow. You should, you know. I, I kind of, like, I want you to watch all my videos, I kind of want you not to watch that one, because I, I was so shit in that game. It's like, terrible. I have to go back to it. I have to redeem myself. We'll see. Um, monthly games continue to lag. It's just... It's getting ridiculous at this point. I'm trying to finish the games as best I can, as many of them as I can, before I give my my monthly recap thing. But some of them are really huge, or really hard, or really boring. <laughs> um, or other games I'm playing get in the way, or other things outside of games get in the way, or I'm just heavy, depressy, and I just don't want to play. Either way, look, I get to it. The December vid at least should be up within this week or next week. Anyway, before you see another news update, you should you should have the December video at least. Uh, January and February might meet, need to be combined if, I, if I'm ever going to catch up and have March done. Uh, anyway, anyway, bunch of shit. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys, anyway. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.